row every day. Yeah. The songs and so I came at the first break. I knew the fuck what I was doing. Studio, so he came and arrived. He couldn't play any song, and then Scott arrived, and he didn't know the lyrics, and he didn't know to play out the, the song. And then Tony, he knew obviously the riffs, but he was he mixed them a bit up. So mm. after the first two days of practice, I was real worried. Shows in Germany were horrible. Yeah, was fucking bad. Well, start out with ar arriving too late at a popcom and got kicked off the grill. Rest in peace. Second night, we had a little talk, <laughs> and now it's all good.
hair gel. Yeah. Do you? Got a little good for ladies this week. You never know when you're gonna get a Hummer in the fucking toilet at the fucking gas station. Just gonna say, oh, I didn't know this was a ladies' room. That's where the ladies hang out. I had a bet on what time you guys were going to arrive, and I lost. We were actually quite on the ball this morning. I don't know, we got we earlier than I expected. Tony's uh, bag, zipper broke. That's happened to me before in the airport. You're, you're trying to go through customs. Everything's falling out. Stuff you're trying to hide from the customs guys, you know, it's all the airport floor. Don't pay attention to that stuff. The thing ever happened to me is like uh, customs in Atlanta. That god, goddamn drug dog started sniffing my leg. And I, I guess I must have stunk like a like a shit house rat. You know, it's like because uh, we were on tour for like six weeks. And I was wearing some okay. like fake leather pants. Some Amish boards. And they were so stinky yeah. that my dog came up yeah. to sniff me. Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. then it was on. <laughs> oh shit. Pretty good. Yeah. So what happened after that? Well, what happened after that is they screwed my guitar apart to make sure there wasn't drugs inside of it. Oh, great. Pulling the pickups out of it and looking under the pickups. Oh, no. And everything. They looked in my booty hole. Oh. If I had anything stashed in my cinnamon ring. You got the, uh, but they got a nice surprise because I didn't shower for 10 days. Yeah. So when they looked inside of there, they got more than they bargained for. <laughs> Did you get the, <laughs> the very large Swedish woman? Huh? Did you get the big, the big uh, dike? To no, unfortunately they don't let women look in your booty hole. Otherwise I wouldn't have minded. <laughs> It was some big dude, you know, some big Jethro-looking motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Sweet Soul Music book. Uh -huh. As soon as I open the book, yeah. the van either stops abruptly, right. as in breaks fall, <laughs> or we go into the roundabout and go around and then park in the middle of the parking lot. Holy shit, man. Can okay. you hear it? Something like that. I've never heard this word before. What? No, it's totally new. Slutin? Maybe that means you're a bunch of ugly sons of bitches. No, 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 no. They liked it. They said, I said, what, what does it mean? They go like, ah. Hello. Hello. Crack kills. I wanted a girl on this boat. Huh. You want what? I want to bang a girl on this boat. You want to find a girl on the boat? The boat's in Sweden, I guess. A hole? No, not a hole. <coughs> There'll be plenty of girls on the boat. Tapping a bitch on this motherfucking ferry? Yeah, Although it doesn't look very busy at this time of day. A friend of mine banged an Israeli chick inside a mosque. Now, that takes balls. So we'll take a second and uh, get the guitars in tune with the uh, universe.
That's a log cabin, just like our ancestors built. I'm gonna go in the toilet and build a log cabin of my own. <laughs> One log after the other. I was in the helicopters when I was riding the bus with them, like, I'd be so fucked up, like, I'd be leaning against a gas pump, like, smoking a cigarette, and these truck drivers would pull up and start talking to us, and, like, 
German or something. He said, don't smoke at the pump, you stupid idiot. The hell? I didn't know. Dan Quayle, what a knucklehead that was. He went, he went to Latin America and goes, I, I apologize, I can't speak Latin. <laughs> 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 Fucking numbs <laughs> Okay, dude. Then solo. Is there more words? Is this course? Yeah, there's another word. There's another lyric. Uh, uh, there's another one? Yeah, I think it's a repeat of the last one. Or the first one. My girl, she don't want to understand. Okay, that's fine. Downtown, that's fine. And we get with the guys in the neighborhood pub till I got, I got something it. starts right. to drown. They went to Europe with Iggy yeah, for three yeah. months. They just take the stairs. And the Fred was really just they trying to decide, should I go? We'd already recorded uh, City Swag and Electric Fat Exotic. And it's coming out. <laughs> they wanted everybody to go but me. Because... Iggy didn't need another yeah. truck guy, or whatever, I don't know why, he just he didn't want them. So they did the three-month tour, and then at the end of the tour, Fred said, okay, we're going home, you know, we have our own band, the record's already done, we're back to Detroit and put the record out. So they did, and Iggy was disappointed, but, you know, there was nothing, it was, it had been decided before the tour ever happened. So, so they came back, and, and while they were gone, I recorded, did some recording with some friends of mine. And nothing to release, just, you know, something to do. You know, I'm sitting around on my ass for three months, you know, waiting for them to come back. And so me and Fred got in a big argument about it, and I had recorded another version of, of Electrophonic Time. Just the kicks. And he was really pissed off about it, and tried to make a big deal out of it. I'm like, what are you talking about? You left me here for three months. I said it was okay. You know, you went, you're back, the record's coming out, what's the problem? So we had this argument, and I, I, I can be really fucking pig-headed if I don't watch myself. And I was, and I just said, well, fuck you. I don't want, I don't want electrophonic time to come out. I don't like it. And I was like, it's like the words are coming out of my mouth in the little balloon, and I'm trying to pull them back. Like, what the fuck did I say that for? And he's going, well, all right, well, okay, you know. <laughs> so it didn't come out. It, was, it just got really stupid. It was a stupid argument. I mean, it was always intended to be the B-side. Liquorphonic Tonic was intended to be the opener. It was written that way because of the way it starts. Lines up like a big machine, you know. Mm -hmm. And City Slang was intended to be the closer because it just goes crazy at the end, you know. Mm -hmm. Just jams and rock and roll to your head, you know. Yeah. But because of that stupid argument, Electrophonic Tonic did not appear on the record. We never went back to the studio. Never made an album. But there was all these live tapes. This is the old city, I think, here. That's fucked up, motherfucker. Where's this fucking Viking boat? Right here. Oh, no Viking boat. They, uh, resurrected or what? Yeah, uh, It was in the water the last time we were here. In the water? Yeah. I didn't see it. The Viking drop off. I didn't see it. Oh, this guy. No, he's, he's making it. Okay. That was the most confusing directions I've ever heard. <laughs> Smoking a bong hole. Ooh, milfy, milfy. Oh, that was sort of a milf. Almost a gilf. Not only will she pork you, but she will wash your socks and cook you breakfast. Look at ass. You'll pass the giant <laughs> elevator and the co-op food store. Short distance past that. On your left will be the club. Over there, it's the door. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. These girls know. just the baser. Oh, come on. 
Oh, oh god. Oh, she took offense. What a strikeout. Right, so the case, man. What a strikeout. She's too cool for the base. Ask a fucking grandma where the punk buckle is. Yeah. <laughs> Great idea. Perfect. Sure. She goes where the street is. She hangs out there all the time. I drank beer with her there. Tons of it. She is pointing in the right direction. That's exactly correct. There it is. See it? Look to your right. Ah, uh, sure enough. See the club. See the club. So we were going right. right. Yes, you are. We weren't going right left. Right. We were going right left. I don't care. Go to that place. Well, okay. Destroy it. <laughs> Go to that place and destroy it. You are there. That's the stage entrance.
records sound about the same All those heroes in the little lane
having a little fun with that one. Thanks so much. This, uh, another oldie. It's also dedicated to my personal hero, Carlson from the Roof. carried away with that last one. Yes. 
Dankjewel, thank you.
dedicate this to my friends Carl, Nick, Kenny, the helicopters, and all my friends here. Dave Champion, Pinkson. Guys at the helicopter shouldn't laugh at me when I play this wrong. Okay, if I forgot anybody, you have to buy me a drink.
Tony Slug and myself, thank you. And good night. Whether it's uh, Curse Mayfield or uh, Mia Simone or Billy Holiday or Cecil Taylor or Miles Davis or John Coltrane, or just kind of bent my mind out of shape or into shape, you know? Mm -hmm. In a really good way. I'm totally inspired by it. Something connected to the uh, to the other world, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what they're doing, and that's what all I'm trying to do, really. Connect to the other side of uh, life. Welcome to the Guitar Army. Flies over. Yeah. Uh, be a lot lighter now, I'll tell you. <laughs> a lot lighter. Hey, <laughs> 20s that way. Yep. Say what? Say what? If you go to sonicsrendezvous.com, you will see no tribute to Fred Smith or to Sonic's Rendezvous Band. You will see a one page rant. And it may say something like Fred Smith was the greatest guitar player of all time, which is got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But then there's, it has this other stuff, which is like totally fictitious. Sonic's stuff. in his band and tries to like leech off of Fred Smith legacy. But stuff like that, like yeah. Inferior versions of the Sonic yeah. 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 stuff. Yeah, uh, so yeah band before, before those things were out. You know? Total yeah. cap and on. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, libels and stuff. Tell it to Scott Ashton and Gary Rasmus and Scott Moore. This conversation with Patty Smith, and it's like, well, Fred's songs, you know, I, I control them, as Fred's widow, and you control your songs. It's just real simple. Smith didn't have any objections or anything. Patty Smith had no objections yeah. to the release of the box set. Uh -huh. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a beautiful tribute to Fred. It is, yeah. Um, and long overdue, in fact. Long overdue and one that will stand the test of time. Yeah. That Sweet Nothing record came out, or whatever, that one live record. I think it's called Sweet Nothing. Yeah. We were just fucking happy to finally have uh, a record with those damn songs on it. So I, I think that, that anybody that would whine about uh, redoing these, uh, these, these songs in the studio, they're just idiots. I have to take another look at the scenery. I'm just trying to amuse myself. Yeah, sure. So.
Germans that and their beer. That's a damn Chevy. I want to live down there. Woo! I mean, Germans can make good beer, but Germans cannot make good punk rock. Who painted that Satan shit on there? Uh, I ain't into that devil worshiping boo shit. I've got me a dirty mouth. Could have get washed out with soap. Any of you guys ever get your mouths washed out with soap? I'll never forget that piece of soap they stuck in my mouth. I, I it, it had a picture of Winnie the Pooh on it. <laughs> oh. it. It sort of ruined my uh, my uh, solidarity with Winnie and all of his comrades. Reese, could I could I uh, take a little bit of a front? I had my choice between the dandy punk and the mature woman. I th think I would choose that one. Oh, the dandy punk. He's gonna be nothing but trouble. He's gonna want me to buy clothes for him all the time. And shit. This this girl doesn't want any clothes. No. That's what you call low maintenance. Because it's their backup band. Actually, they're probably gonna smoke our ass. It'll be the first day to do it. So this is there are a lot of fucking hot bitches in this town. Bet they could too. You have to keep in mind where this whole AA came from. It's got some serious cult connections. Yeah. An intelligent human being can pick out the useful information and use it to his benefit and uh, forget the mindless uh, drivel. In the end, it's like uh, if, okay. if you don't no enjoy it anymore, we'll it if it's fucking with you, then don't do it anymore. Of course. I was like, well, gee, that's sort of easy. It's nothing to do with being powerless over alcohol. It's like, I've got the power over it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I've got, I'm the one who decides, do I stuff that fucking, uh, that's right. that booze in my face or not? Right. Say, okay, I sit down to a meal and I want a nice one beer with that meal. If I drink that one beer, I'd be like, mm, I think I want another and another and then the next thing you know I'm drinking a bottle of vodka and I'm pissing on your sister one's too many and a dozen ain't enough. yeah cuz I'm just a maniac about it cuz I love getting drunk I don't like being a member of any club no I don't either mm. I, I liked being in the Boy Scouts until the until the scout leader was trying to pork me and then the mob the mob uh oh he went to prison oh, where he got all the donut punching he could deal with don't they always do <laughs>
composure. Boo, we can't drink. We get some fucking drunk off the one drink. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Who are you talking about? Our fans? Yeah, your friends, man. Your lady friends, friends at the breakfast table. Well, the girls. Uh, the girls. Yeah. You object to my having coffee with the girls, cops? They're about as old as my niece. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't care about how old he is. If there's grass on the infield, oh, play shut ball. Shut up. We already heard that one. Uh, the one girl, uh, she too. made me a waffle. You want some whipped cream and strawberry jam on it? Hell yeah. One of those girls borrowed like uh, 120 crowns. She wasn't able to pay it back. She, one of those girls, she'd show it in her tits 120 seconds to him. And he was like, I'd rather have those 120 crowns to get some beers. <laughs> <laughs> did I say I did pay 120? Said it was worth 120. I said, I did not say I was a millionaire, but I said I have spent a million dollars. Willie Dixon. I'll try anything once. And I did. What I learned from trying everything once was uh, what not to do the second time. DMT, I think it's called. I have no idea what it is. You have to refrigerate it. It looks like beeswax and you take a razor blade and chop it and then you go like, oh my god, my mother was right. <laughs> I should never do drugs. I've seen other people just like completely really lose it on that show. I went to see the Whoop about what weeks ago, and then this guitar started like this windmill and the guitar playing. That was worth my fucking 30 bucks, man. <laughs> that windmill and stuff is not easy, man. The hard part is like when you swing your arm around, I can't really do it here, is to actually not slam your hand into the guitar neck and to actually just make a chord, you know. When they played in Ann Arbor, they uh, put a smoke bomb or something on the stage because it looked cool at the end of the show, you know. So, like, they're up there playing and the stage is all covered with smoke. And all of a sudden you see the fire department come in with, like, extinguishers going, where's the fire? Where's the fire? <laughs> running around with all the When I saw the animals, Eric Burden, just like, one song goes like, and he just like, went, boom, fell down. The song, the song stops, and he just stays there. And he's lying flat on his back. And the music stopped, and all of a sudden, people were rushing up on stage like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And he just jumps up and goes, ah! <laughs> I gotta try to not be vulgar today. Today I'm going to be Mr. Mascot, because so i got to get back into the normal, yeah, nice to get back into the normal sort of easy going way, so that when I see my girlfriend, I don't say, hey bitch, what's up with your pussy? Or something like that. i got to get back to normal, so I can see you know, hi, sweetheart. That's a fine i got to take another look at Bridget's Snatch. Well, there's Snatch all over the place in this mag. So we're talking about Booker G and the MGs, and they play again at uh, Detroit. This time, I'm back sitting. So then I'm going, I got it. Now I have to finish this conversation that I didn't have with Steve Crapper before. Then I had to tell him, like, we were trying to get on Stax Records with the Rationals, and we were working with this guy, Don Davis. He wanted us to record, I just want to testify, with Booker T and the MGs backing us up. And like, duh, we're going like, no. And it was like, what? We play our own guitars and drums. We write our own songs. You know, we're not going to do that. Uh -huh. And then, you know, like, after you said that and you look back on it, you go like, what the hell were we thinking? We could have been playing with Booker T and the MGs and on Stax Records. Finally, we take this trip down south and um, we stop in Memphis and we drive by the Stax Road Theater. One of the guys goes in and goes in. He says, well, they're having a session, but they said you can come in and watch. And we're like, oh, it sounds like they're too busy. Maybe we shouldn't. So we leave. And it's like, wait a minute. You just see these golden opportunities, like, and they just like kind of fly by. No, I don't want that. No, no thanks, no. I'll go my own way. I'm not the same. <laughs> yeah, looking back, sometimes it's difficult.
<laughs> it is too early to be perverted, but I must say, Tony, that I will crack your brains open like coconut. A skull like I crack your skull like coconut to drink the juice. Underwear to fudge factory. <laughs> My wife dropped it, I had to wash it all out. I can see you guys sharing the cell. I'm very excited about I'm not going. <laughs> You never going. know. Do not say never to. Do not say never you to. You know for sure. Going. Going. If Allah does not, does not abbreviate the abuse of Western civilizations, poisons. Well, you must keep your priorities in the right order. Yeah, you bitch bastard. Request? Yeah. You guys know Stairway to Heaven? Stairways to Heaven. My favorite song was that I left my snake in San Francisco. <laughs> Thank you. Let me out of this torture room. I feel as if my penis is in a laundry press. <laughs> it comes out looking like the tail of a beer. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Suriname little store. Yeah. You know, one where I always met a hot sauce. Yeah. These two gay dudes, like a Dutch guy and his boyfriend from America, they both had like dyed red mustaches. And that's the only place where they sell Crisco. They bought like 10 fucking tins of it. Suriname guy goes, Party tonight, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fist again. Fist this time, time is here. In and out and in and out it goes again. What the hell was you want? Eight cans of Crisco. I need a little elbow room. <laughs> <laughs> elbow room. Okay, you want one of these? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. What was that? Ah, oh, the sea, ah, oh, the sea, long may it be, now long may it stay between England and me. It's a sure guarantee that one day we'll be free. Thank God we're surrounded by water. We're at the uh, truck stop somewhere, and they have the cotton machine, and it has, each place has its own assortment of uh, extra stuff. Vibrating, you know, vibrating things, well, uh, little knobs on it and stuff. And one of them was the uh, travel pussy. Uh huh. And so I asked these guys what the hell it was, and uh, I don't think they could tell you. I can tell you what a travel pussy is. Yeah, a, sure. You travel that. pussy is a pocket pussy. It's a pussy that you can put in your pocket, and you can get you something, whatever you please, without exerting any energy to try to pick up a woman or spending any money, you can find gratification. You can get instant gratification all across the nation. And how does it work? Is it, is it like a know. condom? No, it's it's uh, it's like sort of like a just a rubber thing. A bag? A rubber bag with receptacle? Yeah, with some with some uh, like a it's like a water balloon kind of thing, but like with a with a hole. Uh -huh. Sperm or something? And, it, and like, sort of like with, with suit. But it depends on the quality of the pocket. <laughs> it's coming out of a machine. You yeah. put like a quarter in it. Or and it's like a water balloon with a, with a hole in it. And you just go to town on that. <laughs> now, the, so, <laughs> so this is not like a battery operated thing or something. It's, I don't it's, think it's, no, that's, 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 that would be your deluxe model pocket uh, pussy. You, you can't get that out of the machine. <laughs> this battery's not included, Kevin. Uh, so this is strictly a manual contraption, eh? Yeah, it's, it's about as primitive as it gets. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I myself prefer jelly donuts warmed up in the microwave for a couple seconds. It's a little bit more realistic. From, yeah, from, uh, you should see him make the donuts, man. <laughs> So, do you add anything to the jelly donuts, though? I mean, uh... Yes. Yeah? Dode. Wing Wang. <laughs> wow. Adds jelly, warm jelly donut plus schlong equals seven minutes of pure pleasure. Did I tell you about the story about the helicopters going to see the Rolling Stones? They opened for them in Helsinki and Stockholm. Uh -huh. And they went to the sound check. They said they were the worst band they'd ever heard in their lives. They were just... Going, this is the Rolling Stones. This is going to be terrible. So they came out for the to you know the, the, of course after they opened they went out to watch the Stones and they said they were just dead on. 
the sound check was like it's sound check it's not tuning check it's not song check it's sound check but by the time they, the show comes on, they're hitting on all cylinders. I screwed my guitar like by like over uh, slamming it into the stage. Setting on fire. <laughs> Setting on fire didn't help me. But I mean, that didn't really mess it up. You ever had homosexual relations? Why not? It's like, how can you know you're not gay if you've never tried it? Everybody else is jumping off a bridge. Would you do it too? Depends on what if there was a booty hole at the bottom of that bridge waiting for me. <laughs> I'm on a rap to all you motherfuckers about my best friend knows no good truckers riding down the road, can alone, feeling more sexy than a pregnant toad. Check it out the scene on my CB, cause I don't want no bears fucking with me. Uh-huh. Yeah. I can accept that. I can continue. Please, Please do. Um, smoking weed, feeling fine. When suddenly I see a blue light behind. Wait a minute, my woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be extremely loud. <laughs>
we changed drivers, we stopped in Cologne, stretched the drive from 9 hours to 15 hours, and just walked on stage and played. And I think we did pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I put the key for the locked up door downstairs to yeah. my trousers. So. Your right. trousers are downstairs locked up? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is there anything about the, no, the Autobahn number 602? No, it's, no, it says That's A64. Yes. The, the bigger the number, the better. Cock blocking is, like, Tony's got a friend, right? Tony, Tony's got a very good friend <laughs> that he might know in personal uh, ways. Or and, biblical uh, ways. And, uh, like, Eugene is drunk, and Eugene thinks that it's that he's charming, he's drunk, but actually he's like usually slobbering on himself and eating his hair. Okay. And uh, talking about stuff that, that no one understands anyway. So, Tony might be kidding himself, but <laughs> the, the drunk Irishman comes and goes, Hey, I am from Ireland, oh, I'm very partial to hats, you know, and uh, I play a wee bit of piano. Hey, I play the Johanna, that's my word for piano, and that the word for uh, whiskey and Welsh is, uh, and he's just going on and on, and he basically takes Tony's um, potential, <laughs> takes nookie. his potential nookie, and uh, and confuses her because the, the woman is then completely uh, mentally distraught because she doesn't understand what this this big free willy motherfucker is talking about, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then Tony ends up. Stroking his own shaft because the girl doesn't want anything to do with him because she thinks that fucking Tony guy. I thought he was cool, but that friend of his, fuck. Sonny Vincent is the ultimate cock blocker. How was that? Well, we had this whole spiel worked out. Maybe Paul can explain it better. No, no, I, I've, I've, I've sworn secrecy. Really? About the Chuck Berry rule? Yes. Oh boy. What is the Chuck Berry rule? Well, <laughs> shall I explain it, Paul? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's like this. Suppose you're, you're, you're talking to a new special lady friend backstage, mm -hmm. and here comes a potential cock blocker who's in your band or entourage. And, oh, introduce me to your friend. Then uh, the first one could say, well, that was a really nice Chuck Berry lead you did, Paul. <laughs> the word Chuck Berry indicates that Paul has a scram. You gotta go, I'm working on this woman. <laughs> Uh, but you cannot just say Chuck Berry. You really have to make an effort. If you go digging in those in those woods, you'll find all kinds of shit. So this is the battleground of Verdun here, huh? Yeah, pretty nearby. Yeah, we'll pass. Oh, we did. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people died. Yeah. Oh, just around this this whole area is just one big one big graveyard, huh? One big mass grave. I think most of the stuff should be in like this. Here. When the windows roll, roll down, just because the guy's saying something to him, mm -hmm. and the next thing you know, he's leveling the gun at him like this. Holy shit. And so Scott hits the gas. Uh -huh. He's going like, <laughs> pedal to the metal, and the guy fires. Hits him in the back of the head, and he just keeps on going, man, for like 10 miles. Finally, the they pull him over and it's like the plain clothes, like detectives and stuff like that. They go, why did you run? Where are you from? We're from Ann Arbor. I said, well, you guys come down here from Ann Arbor. You think you can just do anything you want to do, you know? Uh -huh. And uh, what they were looking for was the wadding. They have like a triple shot gun. It's like, mm -hmm. the first one's a blank. The second one is a, it's just a, a dub dub bullet. And the third one's the real deal. And Holy shit. the first one. He just hit him in the back, creased the back of his head. Uh -huh. So they were looking for that because they didn't want to send the evidence out, you know. Uh -huh. And told them to get the hell out of there. So all these people said, uh, well, this guy, you should sue him. He's going like, are you crazy? Then every time I go to Detroit, they'll be like after me. So we'll be after me. No, that's not it. So we have it straight. My baby, she shakes like a cello. Man, that's the that navigation fucking shit that's going on. Oh, it's a no, fucking idiot. Dumb shit. They're gonna do this. Expect it. Fucking one hell of a cellar down there. 
Hell of a seller. Dysfunctional equipment must be utilized.
Beautiful moraine for a little bit. Yeah, And my very best. Over Paris Radio 93.1. They're uh, playing all our stuff. Yeah, you know? they play. Vincent plays the best stuff. Yeah, and he he would interview us in English, and then he would translate it in French. Show us your tattoos, please. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, it's so been, great. It's been yeah. well work. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So the, cool. The band dessinée. Of course I know that. Yeah. But uh, maybe I'll come back and go to Scandinavia. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Right. Lots of coffee for you. Sausage soup. Come on, Scott. We got a dollar waiting on the dime. <laughs> <laughs> will get compensation. I promise you that. Compensation for what, Paul? What happened? Compensation for being awoken like a boy scout at 8 o'clock in the morning by a fucking French-speaking motherfucker who doesn't know what, hey, I'm sleeping means. So, wait, hey, I'm sleeping means knock on the door louder or come on inside and look at my naked ass laying in bed. That's what come on in, or that's what I'm sleeping means. I'm angry. And maybe that's nothing to do with my antidepressants, but I'm fucking angry. Mm. I'm very angry. It's just, I'm, but I'm in control. I'm in control. Mm. Yeah, well, we're about, you're about to find out. We're going to fucking give them the business. I'm going to give them this one. You know what shocker. that is? The shocker. <laughs> Apparently what this is is two fingers in the pussy and one in the booty hole. Two it's in the pink, one in the stink. Two, <laughs> two in the pink and one in the stink. <laughs> and it was some scandal, but it's like, who cares? It's like, uh, the Americans are so crude, they've got no problem with killing motherfuckers. But th this is disgusting. Pink and stink, it's great. Like a little tiny wall between the pink and the stink. You know, and that tiny wall, when you start tickling it, they go berserk. <laughs> we have to talk. We need to know uh, why we were woken up at 8.30 in the morning. Because you don't ask to, uh, to be that disturbed. How, but, but how do we ask not to be disturbed when there's no signs? Usually you can hang something on the door that says do not disturb. Yes, you, have, you can ask to me. Uh, but nobody was here when we came, we came in at uh, 2 in the morning. Yes, when, when, uh, when you book, you can ask every morning. The woman, the housekeeping, knocked at all the door. Why? To clean the room. Well, what? But why? I mean, it's like if checkout time is 12, they should clean the room when we're gone. Yes, but somebody uh, check out uh, before noon. But we don't. I mean, how could you know? It's like, but it's not okay to wake somebody up at 8:30 in the morning, especially when we're working and we rent this, we rent the hotel that we can get rest. We don't rent the hotel so somebody can beat on our door at 8.30 in the morning and wake people. us up. She did. When people say to me, I, will, I would like to, to sleep till noon. But how can I tell you when I come you in at two? I, I don't want to wake you up because I'm a, I'm a nice man. I don't want to yeah, wake up the receptionist at 2 o'clock and say, don't wake us up. It's, it's because normally when there's nothing said, the cleaning woman doesn't come inside the room. I've never had this happen before. At 8.30 in the morning, she came inside. Yes, but if uh, there is no answer, she, I was sleeping. How am I going to answer? I'm, I just, uh, what's that? And, and then yeah, somebody right. opens the door and I think it's somebody breaking into the room to steal my passport and my wallet. It's yeah. not okay. To the man, to the man. It's total shit. And we want compensation. 
We don't, because we did, we slept four hours because of this. Four hours. Why not? Because it's not possible. But I, I need a reason why it's not possible. You don't have money here. Because you don't pay the room, and because we it's pay the room, we pay the room. No, that's not true. That is true. But technically, we are paying for this because we worked for a fucking our fucking night of sleep. That's what we did. We worked for it, and we didn't get anything. So I wanna, I definitely wanna be compensated. Mm -hmm. No, that's not possible. You can charge it back into the credit card. That's it. No, that's not possible. I can't charge it and credit card. This is turning into a broken record. But How can I be back on sleep when I'm waking up at 8 30? I'm fucking shredded. I can't sleep anymore. No I was like totally 100% out, so somebody started <laughs> banging on my door. That's like this. That's not That's like what, this. how it she was. It's not like this. It was. I want to compensate it money wise, and there's no fucking other way. So yeah. write me a letter and then uh, I will send you a check. Okay? Okay. Acceptable. The life of a hydromatic is always intense. <laughs> if you go you know, either in or in the life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't care, boo-boo. I am going to pork this chick on the picnic table. <laughs> All right, yo, what's going on here? Uh, nothing, sir. Just get the fuck out of here. Yeah, okay. Cool. Let's do it. Tony, what, what you got there in your hands? It's a Vietnamese spring roll of sorts with uh, <laughs> shrimp and a uh, urine sample from Guy's grandmother. All right, that's it. Uh, break out that whiskey. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, yes, I do. I was in the fucking van the whole time. You think the upstairs, I don't think the kitchen. Oh, touch. I don't know what they're talking about, man. I mean, I hate the what German assistant. What are you complaining about, man? We're complaining because we just had the can't build There's nothing the wrong with this road. What's wrong with it? We just had to pay 40 life. euros. I said, what's wrong, what's wrong with it? Not how much does it cost. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Yeah. It costs a lot of money. That's it. But there's nothing wrong with the road. All right, get in line, motherfucker. Okay, Scott's first. Before beauty, I've got to get out of the van. I'm not offending you with this stuff, am I? You're used to it, right? Of course, if my girlfriend was driving, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be behaving like this. But she's one of the dudes. Uh, these are some sightseeing besides the fucking highway. Damn, man, look at those cancerous trees. They look all crazy. Some wacky ass trees, man. Yeah, they're all fucking tumorous. So we played this place called Undoin, tiny village, totally rocking the hell out of everybody. But we didn't have a hotel, so we had to go through all these small rows to find wow. a hotel. Yeah. And so we, you know, were blocked off by military at gunpoint. And uh, they had to, you know, point their, their guns at us inside. We had to show them our ID. Turns out that the, the separatists were like launching some kind of offensive, and they were blowing up cars left and right. It was just wow. intense. So when you were stopped by the military, they uh, they checked all your stuff, and then uh... no, the, they just stopped every, everything, and then they offered us an escort. You know, but we were driving uh, actually an old military van. I'm like, no way! You know, you guys are the target here. We're, yeah. we're not going to follow you. This shirt makes people happy. <laughs> Most the Basque are like brothers to me. Never say you're in Spain when you play in a Basque village. Never say you're in Spain. Yeah, huh? I made a mistake one time. Like a guitar player goes, "Oh, it's great to be in Spain," and I start throwing bottles. It's just not a Spain. It's a Basque country. <laughs> no, they go, I'm not a Spanish. I'm a small Basque. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. The small villages. Man, they were hardcore about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, like every small village, just like two or three great rock and roll bars where you know mm -hmm. there'd be like a big MC5 poster or flaming rubies, and mm -hmm. they don't play ska, they don't play metal. It's almost all rock and roll and nothing but it kicks ass. Great. Cool. I'm gonna buy you a pocket pussy. It's soft and pink and wet and gushy. Gonna buy you a pocket <laughs> pussy. I get songwriting. Now that we're in Spain, how do you feel about it, man? I love doing chicken dance. 
Oh, check this out. This is even better. It's got Benito Mussolini on there. Holy shit. This hardcore. Just to beat beat the shit out of people, huh? Yeah, you know when you're a truck driver, somebody, you know, some lot lizard wants to crawl in and just whack him. We gotta find a pharmacy. What for? Morphine. Morphine. Yeah. Go in there and say, uh, Ramal comprimidos, por favor. Las drogas. Quiero comprar drogas. Drogas. Comprimidas. So you want to go someplace that has like a dinner? Yeah, uh, somewhere it's a little bit more rust rustical. Yeah, that's See. fine. Leg of pig. Jambon. Smoked leg of pig. Jambon. Jambon. It's like a Muslim's nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's like 50 pig legs hanging from the ceiling. Wait, wait, let me ask a question. You guys yeah, that's right. When you guys like uh, played with the rationals in the 60s and were getting swarmed by girls, did you guys like, like, was the excitement so that you guys thought, oh man, we're going to be as big as the Beatles? Sure. Of course. Yeah. yeah. You, know, like, you have to explain that excitement. I'm curious uh, okay. about it. Well, if you play in front of 10,000 screaming girls who are just adulating you, it just takes the saliva out of your mouth. It's like, you know, it's just like all of a sudden you go dry mouth like you just smoked like a really major hooter. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, it's just like you're, you've lost your mind, basically. But then you come back down to... Did you have dreams of riches and stardom and... No, it was ha all happens too fast. You know, nothing like that happens. And then, it, and then it's like it's like it was just snatched away. Yeah, just like that. No, immediately. As a matter of okay. fact, yeah. uh, we went to a really crappy gig after that and played in a basement for a Nico. bunch of people that could Nico. give a shit about who we were. Yeah. Nico, what? Can we stop for a second here because we're just going around and around in circles? I, I'm no. No. Taxi driving. We've got it under control. Hey man. You don't got nothing under control. Shut the fuck up now! Oh, before I really get pissed off, you I've can, got, you I can't just get more jumped. Off than I, I just jumped in the fucking front seat because nobody wants to fucking navigate us fucking anywhere, and I've got it under fucking control. If you want to sit up here and do it your fucking self, do it. Oh, I want to hear. I want to see this actually. Actually, I want to see this. When you, when you do more than sit back there and get wasted all day, go that way. Go to the first roundabout. I would suggest we go that direction. And after that, then I'm clu then I'm clueless. Then we'll stop. Yeah, I'm yelling because it's like you know, like everybody's got their two cents to put in, but nobody fucking does jack shit about it. I just asked you to pull over for a second, man. So yeah, I'm just losing my nerves. I'm sorry. I know, right I know, now. I know. We all are. Sorry, I freaked out. I'm losing my cool. I'm cutting back on my antidepressants, and you can tell. <laughs> it's true. I'm going to increase mine. That's nothing I yeah. didn't know is that he was giving us directions from the south, and we should have been uh, going for the directions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, man. Yeah. My, my deepest apologies for my little temper tantrum there. Now that I've finished taking my medication, oh, the, yeah. the interferon and stuff, I'd like to have me on heavy antidepressants, which I'm now supposed to start because I, I was taking, taking four a day, and I've got to cut it down over the next three weeks We're to there. zero a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, amen.
sucks, man. It just sucks. Yeah, but is that our fault? We could just get the fuck out of here. We were still wanting around for that dinner. Man, relax. You want one of my happy pills? No. Well, I quit. I'm going home. single and there were there were some cassette tapes going around in the underground circuit and maybe four or five people in all of Europe knew who that band was and uh, the, how I hooked up with the helicopters was the, sort of talking about it they asked you know, you know something about Google so that's how we became friends uh -huh. this is right after the first helicopter show and uh, one thing led to another Nick called me up 5 a.m. and hey Guess who I met to tonight? You know, it's Scott Morgan. Do you think I should ask him for our project? Mm -hmm. Because Nick and myself had decided we're going to do a cover band and rip off every riff ever made by the Ronnie Boo Band. So I was like, fuck yeah. You know, let's go right to the source. Uh -huh. And Scott was up for it, and here we are. So, yeah. and I just do my thing, you know. I put my. I know the songs, I like them, I play them in the way I think they're supposed to be played. and. I add to it what I add to it, because I'm a musician, I'm not a copy machine. One way, I don't give a shit what anybody says about the band, because I know we have a good thing going on. You know what I mean? I know there's some intrigue going on uh, somewhere in Michigan, and uh, I don't think Scott deserves that criticism. It's uh, really admirable that a guy his age is still doing it, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm proud and happy to, to do this. And it's also not like we or I started listening to the MC5 two years ago because of the Levi's commercial. Mm -hmm. I grew up with that stuff. You know, we didn't. We're not a bunch of metal guys who cut their hair and because MTV, MTV decided that punk rock was okay again. So I gotta say, if people don't like it, they fuck up. Right now, people think music is something for free. You can download it from the internet. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people don't realize what effort and you know, all the passion you have to put into a band to keep it rolling. Mm -hmm. On all kinds of different levels. It's a lot of work, and we do it because we love this stuff. We don't have a label that pays us all kinds of money to just make it cut your hair, make your hair look cool, get all tattooed. Fuck yeah. that, man. Commercial success is probably not going to happen because we're all a bunch of old, ugly motherfuckers. But eventually, this music will also come reach the people that want to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And you know, out of 200 kids who want to listen to it, one is going to start a band, and you know, out of 20 of those bands, one is going to be totally great. And I fully support that. There's always going to be some kid playing Louie Louie in his garage. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be rock and roll music.
Who is this? The other guy that died with Ben. Oh, yeah. where our friend and uh, uh, tour manager Benno passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, Benno was a dear friend. They also played in uh, the Nitwits, uh, our other band, Mateo and me and myself. Uh, Benno was working for the Rolling Stones, uh, taking down scaffolding, and a terrible accident occurred where, uh, unfortunately, Benno and one of his colleagues uh, died. And we're here to pay respect because uh, we're still in our hearts. It's very appropriate. Um, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are, are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Whatever is in our past, God is in our future. Did you know him? Uh, Twelve years. Mm -hmm. We went on tour together very often. Mm -hmm. and, uh, had a lot of good times. Mm -hmm. Teo was living in Benno's house mm -hmm. uh, while Benno was away with the Rolling Stones. Uh, he was a really close friend. The most thing about Benno is that he was always really helpful. I've heard most people say, oh, okay, I'll help you out tomorrow, you know, moving stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't we'll show up. Benno would be like, there, Johnny on the spot. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs something, uh, he'll go get it. He was the kind of roadie that, you know, if we're playing the North Pole and we don't have catering, then he will, come, Benno will, you know, go out there and come back with a dead penguin between his teeth. We <laughs> have something to chew on. Yeah, he was really a part of the, part of the band. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, just kind of special place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First met him when I started playing with Tony about five years ago. Uh, he's a real helpful guy. We needed something. I was like looking for a drum key. He was like running to get it, like run away. You know, I was like, whoa. Dude like, was obviously all about rock and roll. You know, he just it was his life and literally, literally. Mm -hmm. That's what it said on the obituary. Mm -hmm. He lived his life for adventure and rock and roll. And gave his life for it. I actually talked to the on the phone with him uh, the day before I left for the Stones, and I told him to say hi to Keith Richards for me. <laughs> so that's actually the last thing I said to him. You know. I remember when he was driving us to Rotterdam, and we were in a traffic jam. He just went over the curb, yeah. drove down the sidewalk yeah. to the to the next stop. You know, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, whoa. Man, <laughs> that was pretty good. And then that was just like military training because he had been in the Dutch forces with the United Nations. Yeah, military police. Yeah, military police. Yeah. He never allowed us to get drunk before we logged the van after the show. Okay. Then, then we could do everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't get drunk. And we were in um, maybe in Germany and uh, everyone had beer and plastic yeah. cups. Yeah. And they were throwing them at the helicopters. The helicopters. And then he go. There was this one guy. Yeah, he told him he, not to. Yeah, take yeah. him like this. First he told him not to. Yeah. And then yeah. the guy kept doing it, and he said, that, "Okay, that's it, man." And yeah, he, he put him up against the wall like this. He said, <laughs> "If you throw this so... beer again, yeah. you're in big trouble." And this guy who first <laughs> wanted to to defend himself, but then he looked at Ben up and, and then, okay. I'm okay. Leaving. I'm, leaving. <laughs> I'm not throwing anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, when I was uh, living in Spain and. Uh, it was this moment I had to leave. I broke up with my girlfriend, and uh, yeah, I was I have no driver's license, nothing. And he was the one uh, I called him and said, "Beno, I need to get out of here." 
well, I'm coming, man. <laughs> and it's, he was coming. He, yeah. he rented the van because mm -hmm. I didn't have any money. Okay. He rented the van and he, yeah, we, we took all my stuff. And man, this means it meant so much to me. Yeah, he was there when you needed him. Mm -hmm. He said he saved your life. He saved my life. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he always will be my best friend. So Scott, if you could uh, speak to Benno's spirit right now, what would you like to tell him? See you soon, man. You don't want to see him that soon, do you? <laughs> hey, man, his time is, uh, what's that all about, you know? Mm. It doesn't exist. Mm. Teo, what about you? If you I love you, man. Hell yeah. I love you. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah. Mm. Rock and roll. get this feeling of like nostalgia you know, for standing on a you know this sacred ground and um, it's kind of like going to the cemetery to water your the flowers at your parents grave or something like you know mm -hmm. and it's, it all went together at, one, at once and it was sort of like whoa <laughs> I, I have to stop I have to step away for a minute here I'm okay now. I'm already jealous because they are on tour and uh, with another bass player, which is like seeing your wife fuck with another guy or something. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. And uh, Paul is the perfect uh, bass player, I know. Mm -hmm. he, do, he do the job, he does the job. You know? Yeah, he's, he's been doing an incredible yeah, job. It's, yeah. am it's amazing. Yeah. He's, I love Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul is an amazing guy. Do make love to chickens and fur coats. That fur coat doesn't need a hanger no more. <laughs> I worked with a guitar player for my band. He came from a heavy metal background. He was whining that I was listening to, to Hank Williams all the time. And he, his favorite band was the Super Suckers, right? And then he's like, he's even aping them, like running around with a fucking cowboy hat and shit. <laughs> what a door. And uh, in the end, like whining and complaining about Hank Williams and after he quit, after he quit our band, he learned country via the Super Suckers because they put up that country record. And suddenly he's playing in a country band. I was like, <laughs> it's like the heavy metal guys that discover blues or punk. Yeah. But it's like when you, start, when you change your entire uniform to fit to some image that you're trying to create, then it's just embarrassing. When you start like chucking on uniforms, like in the when you're like, okay, now I'm playing country music, I better wear a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. You know, it's like that. It's so lame. Yeah. How'd you get out of uh, getting drafted? Our manager uh, was like kind of a coach for getting everyone out of the draft. And so like one guy we broke his foot with a hammer. Think so we, we weren't all like doing this uh, cookie cutter technique. We all went down with our own uh, plan. And mine was, uh, uh, well, I'm sorry to say, but I have to say this, uh, to do like hard drugs for a couple weeks and not sleep and not uh, bathe or. That's about it. <laughs> that was enough. That was enough. I got down there. They, they ran me through it once. I didn't wear any underwear. They said, okay, go home, come back. So I came back a second time and uh, did the whole thing again. And I just had like all these tracks all over my arms and stuff. And uh, they said, just get the hell out of here. But they tried to psych me out. They tried to like put me through all these different units, you know, like, uh, are you better than these boys? I'm going, no, no, no. Are you, are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. Yeah, yeah, the doctor chill. said, it doesn't matter if he comes back again. He's going to be the same guy, you know. He's going to be, no way. Like, you're just like, right? There's just blood samples. There's a urine sample. This guy is completely fucked up. We can't put him in the army. Goodbye. So I ended up on the street with Scott Ashton. We were sitting on the curb uh, across the street from Fort Wayne. But he said the first time the police arrested him because 
I said, Are you, do you got any money? You're a vagrant, you know. So they took him to jail, and they started laughing at him because he said, how much money you got? He said, I got five dollars. He's going, you're not a vagrant. You have five dollars, you know. So, yeah, it was all insane. <laughs> Arrested on charges of unemployment. Yeah. Like twisted stuff the American police can do. I, I got kicked out of Florida. You know? They didn't really tell me what they were doing or what the charges really were. And, uh, yeah, drove me to the state line and said, uh, stay out of Florida. Don't ever come back. <laughs> if you come back to Florida, we'll put you in jail. I was like, okay, I don't think I want to come back to Florida anyway. It's only old people in fucking college when mass murderers. Yeah, mass murderers, they love Florida. They even go there to get arrested extra so they can get, so they can get electrocuted down there. In this town, there was, of course, a monastery. It's very Catholic here. Yeah. Right next door to uh, the monastery was the brothel. And you could tell because they had like copper boobs in, in the ground. Later they discovered that there, there was like an underground tunnel going from the monastery to the whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still there. Take it easy with this stuff. Very cool place. This is super cool. Now we ah okay. <laughs> me and you. Okay. I do give or do or take. It doesn't matter to me. Are you a pitcher or are you a catcher? I'm both. <laughs> I'm a s I'm a switch hit. <laughs> <laughs> Now we funk. <laughs> funk. I, I thought you said we <laughs> funk. <laughs> I'm a real lady. Once, twice. <laughs> you see the forehead on that motherfucker? I'm Lionel Richie. Man, the guy's got his forehead. It's like this tall. Yeah. yeah. Big brain. <laughs> He's got a big brain in that head. Why does he much make such shitty music? Every town I go in, there's a street. The name of the street is Funky Funky Bro. <laughs> Take a look at that after we eat. Right. If we have time, I'll fix it. Are you guys ready? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sonic Smith song uh, from Sonic's One of the Band. And uh, we, we get requested this quite a bit, uh, so uh, I think we'll, we'll finish up the night. <laughs>
Just call, street. just call her up, just tell her where we are. We don't even know where we are, man. That burrito this morning was lethal. Was that a moldy burrito? That burrito was something that just wasn't right. Yeah. I mean, it tasted good and everything, but in between these green globules, there were like pus that were popping out of it. That's why I've never been! I'm the big, 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 Yeah, that's actually quite possible. But it makes you feel great, huh? Uh, it helps. <laughs> it does help.
you're just tour. starting your tour. Yes. Yeah, yes. we're just ending today. It's uh, almost almost the end. All right. Okay. Uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we uh, we go north for a few more days, and then I'm going like home. <laughs> you're not yet homesick for Madrid, but I'm already homesick for uh, yeah. for my home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good concept. Man. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm just trying to dry off. It's like I'm just soaked, covered with sweat and Coca-Cola and yeah. <laughs> crazy guys knocking stuff over. And like, yeah. That's rock and roll. Yeah, that's rock and roll, I guess. Yeah. In the mosh pit, yeah. um, people just start going crazy. Like, and they'll knock the microphone into your teeth and just knock your teeth out. Like, you know. Uh -huh. And it's not anything about like just like re reaching down and like grabbing them and saying again, the fuck out. It happens before you even know it, you know. So you have to kind of uh, watch for it. I come on. Give you a present? Yeah. Uh, oh. This is was in Montpellier. Wow. Uh, Subsonica in Montpellier. You were great. You still great. <laughs> I'm gonna set this down here just to be safe. Tell me I can't go in that room. I was like, next time I'll shit on your face, man. Yeah, that's the wrong room. I don't. don't it's on the head. stage. I, I, no, I, I will get it. No, I, no, I just like, you know. I have no problem with these guys. Do you like that record, Scott? Do you like that record? Yeah. It's good, man. Yeah, I like I My Sharpie is on the stage. And they're trying to clear the place, but there you go. Thanks, lad. Okay. Keep on rocking, everybody. We will. Yeah. I think I'll put this in a guitar case and make That's a signature. Right. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Well, merci beaucoup yourself. I ripped up a muscle in my booty hole. Oh, no. I ripped muscle oh, hell yeah. Hole. How'd you do that? Well, it's not really my booty hole. It's in my buttock. And leg. Want to see my booty hole? Yes, sure. you want to see me. You don't want to see mine. Mine has had an extra workout today. No, oh, I know. I just got yelled at by a Frenchman for yeah, shitting yeah, in the girls' toilet. Huh? There's no bucket of... I was like, what do you, what do you expect me to do, froggy yeah. man? No, no, no. I, I got to go. go. Remember the story of a string no. in here. In here, the story of a string. Yes, 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 oh, yes, I do, I do, <laughs> oh god, oh. Yeah, you go to the backstage and you yeah. change the strings. I change the string, the wrong string. Yeah, but I put the wrong string on and tuned it to the wrong note. <laughs> and then I went back to the stage and I, okay, this, this is what I had done. I had like drank French wine, beer, whiskey, smoked pot, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then by the time my string break, I go to the dressing room and there's already a spare guitar there. And say, Dennis is going like, where's he going? There's a guitar on stage. Yeah, already there. You know, and I just like, well, I don't know, I'm just going to. The string there. wasn't the string at all. The wrong okay. string. It no, it wasn't the string. No. It was something to <laughs> let dry uh, sugar. You know, a, th a thing like this. I don't know. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> line. somehow, yeah, somehow we uh, finished uh, it. No, it was a, it was like a banjo yeah, string or something. Yeah, it was the wrong string. Tuned to the wrong note. It was all wrong. As soon as I got to the stage, Dennis said, "Okay, Scott, start the song." And I said, "Huh?" And I was like, <laughs> I, was like I didn't know. It's your song. I'm going like, how's this start? I was like, I'm a total idiot. Hello, hello. That's a great t-shirt. I love that shirt. Yeah. Oh man. Wait, How long he wait, watched? Let, you me, know? let me see. Is this a one? Is this a one and only uh, shirt here? Yeah. Supper star. Kikatur <laughs> mix. What does Kikatur mix? Kikatur the dude. He he is. And uh, and uh, to Tony. Safety pin records, to Tony. Uh, safety pin booking, <laughs> yes. oh, safety pin yeah. everything. And he, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he died in... Two years ago. Two, two, two years ago. No, 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 no. Two years ago, and yeah. this, is, this is for the homage. Oh, okay. All the bands, uh, the rock oh, bands. Oh, that's from. sweet, man. That's a yeah. beautiful shirt, man. Supper star. <laughs> <laughs> Supper star. I could have used a little more sleep, but you know, I guess there's no time. Shower would be nice, you know. But, but not. Let's go. Wait.
goes. Tonight we won't sleep either because we have an 11 hour drive from here. Hmm? <coughs> Could have figured that out yesterday. Great planning. I don't live on this time. This morning time? Mm -hmm. Can you turn the sunshine down just a little bit? Maybe I can pull my pants down and put a brown veil over everything. <laughs> How was your burrito? Like a pocket of pus. Oh, lovely. But it's like horrible to have the runs on the road, especially in France where they don't believe in toilet seats. Yes. Or toilet paper. Yes, I know. Or separate men's and women's toilets. Yes. So usually you go have a diarrhea blowout and you come out with some some lady <laughs> tapping her foot and looking completely irritated. How can you be so audacious to use my toilet? You know? She personally owns it, like her name is fucking stamped on it. Hey, Paul. Oh, he has a white nose. Very white nose. Oh, yeah. Thank you for noticing. If there's no expiration date on it, don't buy it. Just needs one little piece of bacteria inside. Mm -hmm. Just one little tiny microbe. And then what happens? Well, then you're sent to, uh, sent to toilet hell, where you have to uh, pay your dues. You, you go into the box and you feel shame because everybody has to wait for you. It's interesting, because you can like get to suck up the atmosphere of such wonderful open air toilets as here. Mm. But at least they have a handicapped toilet. The other ones were the uh, ones where you have to hold on to the wall, you know? Uh -huh. And uh, in, in this kind of condition, I guess, uh, I don't want to be too vulgar, but if I had to hold on to the wall and put my shoes on the little plates, um, I would have a new, tint to my jeans and shoes because <laughs> it's coming out with such force oh god 20 minutes i can tell you about the next one As we were commenting last night about a proper backstage, I consider a toilet to be part of the deal. Mm -hmm. You know, the shower is extra. You know, <laughs> it's extra bonus. It's, it's for bands that are on the road. You know, mm -hmm. and the washing machine, dryer, mm -hmm. uh, the get in. Uh, where you have like cheese and bread and fruit and mm -hmm. uh, coffee, beer, you know, mm -hmm. juice, whatever. Toilet. <laughs> this, Toilet. this is a major, major uh, part of a proper backstage area. Mm -hmm. Especially today. Any professional nightclub that features bands, especially bands that are touring, but bands in general, should have a toilet backstage. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a whole lot to ask. But often it doesn't exist. Yeah.
totally train wrecked the first uh, bridge part. Just blew right through it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Scott. Ask anybody outside of the band if they noticed. And, uh, not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I was sweating brown stuff. <laughs> That's the bathroom. You want the shower? It's not occupied anymore, by the way, if you need to. Well, why, they, why is the door shut? I just peed in that shower. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> It'll be our secret. Sure. <laughs> I thought we were going to do the interview. No, no, the other guys want to do an interview. What's your favorite color? Blue. What year did you lose your virginity? I was uh, 16 or 17. 16 or 17, mm -hmm. okay. Um, what's your favorite car? Chevrolet. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. The interview's over. Tony Slug. Gee. When did you lose your uh, virginity? I was about 14 and a half. 14 and a half. It was dark. <laughs> no change. I see. How old was she? She was uh, 15. 15. Her name was Flavia. Oh. Flavia. An older yeah. woman. Ooh, nice. An older woman. An older woman. <laughs> what do you say? Around. I still see around once in a while. Popping out babies left and right. So Scott, the uh, end of the tour is near. How are you feeling about that? Looking forward to the end of the tour. It's too long. I've been out for two weeks. Five weeks. Two weeks is that's, that's pretty rough right there. What happens after three months? You don't know what day it is, you know what it is. Some people that like, get back from the tour and they just go like, I'm not doing that again. We got to the point where last night we had a really nice dinner and I couldn't even eat it. It was just so like Oh,